Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Public Improvement Commission hearing of February 27th, 2020. Our first item of the hearing minutes, at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on February 13th, 2020. Any questions or comments on the minutes? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of February 13th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Our next item of the utility poll is a utility poll hearing on a joint petition by Verizon New England Inc. and Eversource Energy for a poll relocation within Bernard Street at Public Way in Dorchester to relocate one existing utility pole to be located on its easterly side, generally at address number 108 south of Talbot Avenue. I'm Katie Flaherty and I'm here representing Eversource. Um, here's Verizon. Uh, hi, Ross Milladu, representing Verizon New England. Uh, as you stated, Verizon is looking to place uh, or relocate an existing pole uh, approximately nine feet. Um, this is to accommodate a new parking lot uh, entranceway that's going in at the corner of Bernard Street and Talbot Ave. Um, just an existing pole being relocated to accommodate the public. It, it seems like our street lighting system is independent of your poles from the photographs. I'm going to assume there are no street light fixtures attached I, to your pole? No, there is not. Great. Awesome. Uh, just a tangential thing, uh, not related to what you are coming here, but 100% of the utility poles are owned by either one of you. Okay. However, the amount of wires that are being installed on your poles are managed by you, not by us. I don't think you seek our permission with every new company that is attaching wires. And it is absolutely evident that the people who are attaching wires to your poles may be taking massive amount of liberties as to how the wires need to be tensioned and or the amount of additional spools that are showing up. It is getting very quickly to look like a part of the planet which we don't want to emulate. Okay, like really, really, uh, rest of the world. So uh, there will be a conversation from us, starting with you as the poll owners, because it is difficult for us to have a conversation with the individual users of the grants which you all give, even though that whole grant of location, even above ground, is managed by this commission. Okay. So we have a situation that is completely uh, challenging out there. Okay. So this will be the start of a conversation. Okay? Sure. Is this the of butter for different parcels? Say that again? Excuse me. So you're moving it from one in front of one property to another property? Is it the same I believe owner? it's all the same uh, owner, correct? There's one... Uh, large development project that's going in on the corner there. It's in front, I don't, I think there's separate parcels, but it's essentially the same project. It's for a new curb cut for a driveway or for a parking lot behind it. Staff has reviewed, we've already approved the curb cut application, recommended to approve the curb cut application pending this poor relocation. Other questions or comments? All right. Members of the public? Todd Robbie. I'll make a motion on a joint petition by Verizon New England and Eversource Energy for a poll relocation within Bernard Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Aye. Thank you. Moving on to our next item, uh, public hearing continued on a petition by TC Systems for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Dorchester. Blue Hill Avenue, generally between Havelock Street and Wilcox Street, <coughs> Havelock Street, southwest of Blue Hill Avenue. This was new business on January 30th, 2020. Had its first public hearing on February 13th, 2020. And this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Proposed Conduit Placement, Blue Hill Avenue at Havelock Street, City of Boston, one sheet dated January 23rd, 2019. Good morning, uh, my name's Adam Heller. I'm here with Sienna Engineering Group on behalf of TC Systems. Um, unfortunately, I do have to ask for another continuation on this project as they still don't have the documentation I was hoping for um, showing the you know um, ownership uh, split um, with TC and XNet as previously discussed. 
Um, however, I would like to address the concern that was brought up uh, two weeks ago about uh, digging through the median. Yeah. Um, we can still revise our running line if needed, um, but we did speak with the contractor that we have in mind, and he confirmed that you would be able to, as, as he always would, um, dig up to the curb and then hand dig around the curb to ensure that it's not impacted, not um, broken, or it, so we wouldn't have to refurbish it. Um, and then, of course, the sidewalk panels that would be impacted would be replaced in kind. So if the main concern was the curb itself, we would be able to avoid um, damaging that. I think the question is you're very close to the edge of the median, so why don't what you I'll just be. stay in the asphalt instead of cutting through the very tip of this? So to sort of yep. loop around right. the edge of the... Oh, right. So you're not hand digging anything. Certainly. Or restoring any concrete. It's all in asphalt. Adding to Commissioner Cording's thought patterns, there may be elements which we may want to program within the median. Let's assume I want to plant a tree, and because now your baby's over there, I can't plant the tree. Because if I dig a hole, I'm going to cut you. So stay away. Understood. We'll do. Uh, so separately, to the best of your knowledge, does the company which you work for, do they have their wires above ground? Do you have cable as well? PC systems or whoever, do they have wires on the joint poles owned by either Insta or... In other locations, yes. Yes. Okay, so if you heard what I said earlier... I did, and I made a note about that. I'm please make a note, because we want to bring everyone over here, and I'm going to show you all pictures as to how you all have conducted business above ground. Sure. And it's not going to look good. Okay? Yeah. So please be prepared to help us to understand why the above ground wires <clears throat> are the way they are. It seems like there is some level of... Uh, I don't know what it is, so you have to explain to us. Okay? Thank you. Other questions or comments? Tyler Robbie? We're good. All right, members of the public? Okay. Two weeks enough time, Adam? I hope so. Hope so? All right, uh, we will see you on, uh, on March 12th. Um, you'll take, entertain a motion to continue for two weeks? I'll make a motion to continue a petition by TC Systems for a grant of location in Blue Hill Ave and Havelock Street as read into the record by the chair to March 12th. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. <coughs> <coughs> Moving on to our next item, on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Roxbury. Humboldt Avenue between Seaver Street and Brookledge Street, Seaver Street at Humboldt Avenue, Brookledge Street southeast of Humboldt Avenue. This was new business on January 30th, 2020, it had its first public hearing on February 13th, 2020, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Seaver Street, Humboldt Avenue, Ave Avenue, Brookledge Street, 129 Elm Hill Avenue, Boston, one sheet dated July 2019. Good morning. Good morning. John Barry from Access Engineering. Chris Finneran from Crown Castle. So uh, Shelley Cullen uh, presented uh, at the last meeting, and uh, she came back with your concerns. And uh, <clears throat> so myself and Chris are here to address the concerns. Great. So Crown Castle does have an existing uh, conduit. It's a microduct that, that crosses Seaver coming down Humboldt now. Uh, it's an old-style terrace span conduit that doesn't have any capacity in it. So that is why we're digging are placing this new micro trench. Um, ultimately, we wouldn't want to incur this additional expense if we didn't have to. So that's the purpose of digging and crossing Stever Street to get to the existing handle. Okay, but you do understand the price of entry to cutting up Stever Street, right? I do. It, it's actually uh, been dug up in 2018 as well. By someone else? Or, or did you cut it up? We did. No, oh, lovely. It's, it's on the other uh, side of Seaver Street. It doesn't cross Humboldt or it doesn't no. go near Humboldt. Sir, I'm not trying to, I'm failing to communicate with you. Seaver Street has been guaranteed and you have wonderfully explained it to us that you, are, you have cut it up once and you want to cut it up again. Yes? Yes, sir. Good. Okay. So there's a price of entry unless you paid up the first time to rebuild that street. Yes, sir. Okay. So. How that works, Chief. So why are you going back to a pole that's already connected? Like, so you have. There, a there's nothing connected. So we're connecting the housing, Boston Housing Authority. That's the purpose of this trench. 
that you're not. That's just you know, the terminus of your current fiber run is in that yeah. that node on the opposite side of Seaver Street, and then you're taking that from there and running into Boston House. Yeah, that the, what's feeding that node is actually 100 Seaver, which is west of Humboldt. So we we can't reutilize that conduit. So if you were to need to continue, are we again like so like you went from this pole, you went down Humboldt, and now we're going back to this pole, we're going down Humboldt again and down Brookridge. Now that if we need to continue, are we coming back to this pole on Seaver and going back down like are we how many times do we start here? Do you have enough capacity to continue? We will with this new proposal, yes. I guess on a somewhat related question. Uh, is there a reason you wouldn't just uh, remove your existing the sort of your existing Crown Castle run and just expand the capacity uh, where you are. Like, why, why are we now having We, we would have to dig up across Seaver Street. We'd, we'd have to replicate that trench. So we'd be doing the same thing. But you're building one trench. You're adding one additional Don't trench anyway, right? Right, it's a micro trench. So oh, I also okay. brought a picture of, you know, we're not digging. No, no, I, I, oh, we did correct it the first time. Yeah. yeah. Got it. But you post a rather interesting uh, scenario, which I don't have an answer, where if you cut up once and you're on the hook for doing the right amount of restoration, does that allow you to chop it up, yeah. chop it up multiple times? Yeah, do it again and again. Yeah. Okay. Right. Other questions or comments? Sir, so, so, same question. You do have some of your assets above ground or, or are all your assets underground? We do have some above ground. Okay, so you will join that conversation because yes, sir. the above ground stuff is, go take a look at it. Interesting. Yes, sir. Thank you. Todd Robbie? All set. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on the side. Make a motion to approve a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of a location to install telecommunication conduit uh, at uh, Humboldt Ave, Seaver Street, and Brookledge Street as, as further read and record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to a public hearing. Our first item is on a petition by SVF Seaport Owner LLC, WS Seaport L2 LLC, Seaport L4 Title Holder LLC, Seaport L Title Holder LLC, 131-149 Seaport Primary Condominium Trust and Seaport Square Owners Association Inc for a street name change, renaming the entirety of East Service Road, South Boston, located between South uh, Seaport Boulevard and Congress Street, to be officially known in the future as an extension of Pier 4 Boulevard. This was new business on January 30th, 2020, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Street Name Change Plan, Pier 4 Boulevard, uh, FKA East Service Road, formerly known as East Service Road uh, Public Way in Boston, one sheet dated January 2020. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman um, and members of the commission. My name is Jody Sanchez from Goulston and Stores, and I'm here on behalf of Seaport Square Owners Association, Inc., which is the manager of streetscape improvements for the Seaport Square project, as well as abutting uh, uh, individual owners of the property um, uh, to East Service Road in the Seaport District. Uh, with me today is Amy Prange from WS Development, um, as you know, we first appeared before the commission on uh, uh, January 30th as new business. Uh, we're here to respectfully request the change in name uh, to extend uh, Pier 4 Boulevard from Seaport, which is currently named Seaport, uh, excuse me, which is currently named um, uh, Pier 4 Boulevard north of uh, Seaport, excuse me, <laughs> which is currently named Pier 4 Boulevard north of uh, Seaport Boulevard uh, to extend it down to Congress Street. Uh, the continuity uh, will help um, one better orient pedestrians and uh, drivers um, to uh, promote access to the waterfront um, as it will help guide people to the pier. Um, and it is also the preferred uh, name for the abutting property owners. I'll now turn it over to Amy Prange. I'm happy to answer any questions. I think um, I mentioned the last time we do have to go to ISD and get a building permit reissued if we're successful swapping the odd and even numbers of the street if we extend Pier 4 Boulevard's house. But. For the record, I appreciate your consideration of the timing needed to sort this thing out in my head. Welcome. Anytime. And this, is, this is Pier 4 Boulevard, north of Seaport Boulevard. This just makes it consistent. 
Other questions or comments? Todd or Robin? We're good. Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion on the petition of the uh, Butters uh, for the street name change from East Service Road to Pier 4 Boulevard as read in the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to our next item on a petition by Boston, the Boston Restoration Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester and Roxbury, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, sidewalk, and driveway curb cut reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavements, speed humps, and raised crosswalks. Locations are Howard Avenue between Quincy Street and Dewey Street, Woodcliffe Street between Howard Avenue and Dacia Street, Wayland Street generally between Howard Avenue and Hartford Street, Magnolia Street between Intervale Street and Bird Street, Faison Street between Blue Hill Avenue and Mascoma Street, Lawrence Avenue between Blue Hill Avenue and Normandy Street, Creston Street between Blue Hill Avenue and Normandy Street, Intervale Street between Blue Hill Avenue and Magnolia Street, Brunswick Street between Blue Hill Avenue and Normandy Street, Devon Street between Blue Hill Avenue and Columbia Road, Stanwood Street between Blue Hill Avenue and Columbia Road, Bishop Joe, Joe L. Smith Way between Washington Street and Genia, Ave Genia Avenue. This was new business on February 13th, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, Grove Hall, Quincy Corridor, Dorchester North, 17 sheets dated February 20th, 2020. Thank you. Good morning. I'm um, Stephanie Seskin. I'm the Active Transportation Director in the Boston Transportation Department. I'm joined today by Dan Marrow, Senior Engineer in the Boston Transportation Department, and Radu Nan, um, our engineer from Kittleson & Associates. Um, we are here with our Neighborhood Slow Streets Project, which aims to proactively improve safety in our neighborhood streets. Um, we choose zones based on uh, crash history, uh, population uh, demographics, um, such as number of children, older adults, people with disabilities, um, presence of community places such as libraries, schools, parks, um, and aim to bring the speed limit in these zones down to 20 through physical design um, interventions. Uh, I'm going to pass it to Radu to talk through um, our proposal. Good morning. Just to orient yourself since um, it's a large area, uh, the zone is bound by um, Columbia Road, Washington Street, Blue Hills Avenue, and to the north, um, as you saw Dewey Street, Cumming Street, <coughs> and Wayland Street. Uh, Quincy, Quincy Road is not part of the zone, nor is Geneva Avenue. Um, as part of the overall zone, we are proposing 42, installing 42 speed humps. Um, the speed hump locations um, were chosen based on the topography of the streets, grade, um, width of the street. Um, also, from field investigations, uh, we have um, checked for um, casings, uh, utility, um, um, valves, uh, manholes, surface utilities, and making sure the locations where speed humps are proposed uh, are clear of existing driveways. Um, the spacing of the speed humps are between 150 and 250 feet. Um, this spacing is designed to keep the driver engaged and maintain a, a operating speed um, relatively low at 20 miles an hour, which is going to be the, the posted uh, speed limit for the zone as well. Um, we are coordinating with Boston Water and Sewer, which has some work um, uh, on Intervale um, Street coming up uh, just uh, east of Blue Hills Ave, and the construction um, plans will note the phasing of the implementations of those speed humps. Um, so, so we're not in conflict in installing speed humps after <laughs> or uh, before the, uh, the, the water main work is uh, being implemented. Any questions about the speed hump locations? So the first intersection we're proposing to change the uh, edge lines um, is Intervale and Thunborough. Intervale is a um, one-way street going um, eastbound, has a 40-foot layout, as well as Fenborough. Um, it's uncontrolled, and we have a children's park to the south of Intervale. Um, the addition of the race crosswalk provides connectivity um, between the children's park and the neighborhood, um, proposing to adjust the sidewalk width and narrowing the uh, edge lines along Intervale to 18 feet um, to, to promote um, um, a shorter crosswalk. The raised crosswalk increases visibility for the pedestrians within that crosswalk. 
um, also promotes a uh, slower approach and higher yielding compliance from drivers towards pedestrians. Um, the area on the race crosswalk will be built with uh, level landing on either side um, to, to provide a fully accessible crosswalk for pedestrians uh, at this location. Our next location is uh, the intersection between uh, Wayland Street and Howard. Um, Howard Avenue and Wayland are both 40-foot uh, layout streets. Um, Howard is a two-way street uh, with on-street parking that alternates between the east side and the west side. Uh, Wayland is a one-way street um, going west away from um, Howard Avenue. And um, it's a two-way street today um, extending east from Howard Avenue proposing to convert um, Howard Avenue to one-way street going eastbound. Howard State. Oh, sorry. Um, I apologize. Uh, Wayland Street extending east from Howard. We're proposing to convert it to a one-way um, because uh, it allows parking on both sides of the road. With this change, um, proposing to adjust the layout of the southeast corner to tighten up the geometry and promote slower right turn um, from Howard to Wayland. Uh, this also includes the uh, reconstruction of the pedestrian ramp, which creates a more directional route and shorter route for pedestrians crossing Wayland. Um, on the um, northern intersection between Howard Avenue and, and Wayland, proposing a race crosswalk um, to promote slower left turns from Howard on to, to Wayland, um, and also reconstruct or constructing directional ramps across Howard to promote full connectivity on both sides of the street. Just a quick question, Stephanie. I apologize for not catching this thing up. You are converting Wayland to a one-way street. Today it is a two-way street, so it's going one way, 40 feet, nice and wide. Uh, if, if you can uh, adjust it is, best, it is better, I think, if you put uh, your your devices to slow traffic, whether it's a race crosswalk or a speed hump on Wayland, because it is possible that your thoughts, now you're creating a 40-foot one-way street, mm -hmm. okay, and I believe within the, the remaining areas of the neighborhood, you have taken measures to slow things down. Mm -hmm. This may be a location where you may want to think about putting something proactively, okay? Yes. Just, just, just give it some thought and that's about um, so it'll be a one-way pair with another street so that they're both two ways today. Um, they'll be paired one way is like the rest of the neighborhood. Um, the other issue that we're seeing out here um, is uh, the slope of the street. Um, on these two paired are higher than what we would be recommending at this time. In addition, we have a lot of people who are parking on the sidewalks um, to avoid being uh, sideswiped by oncoming drivers and since sidewalks are the number one tool for pedestrian safety. We'd like to have people parking in the street, on the street. not on the sidewalk. So the, the, the volume of uh, on-street parking will uh, slow traffic down automatically? Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we do uh, post-evaluation after, you so we'll also see if we have actually increased speeds and um, figure out what the right solution is at that time. Okay, so a little bit further north on Howard Avenue. Um, Howard Avenue um, between um, <coughs> Woodcliffe Street and Dewey Street has a variable or varying um, width layout and edge line, um, which um, uh, we are proposing to change and create a consistent um, ed edge line that's consistent with um, the edge lines on Howard Street, just north and south of this location. As part of realigning the edge lines on Howard Street, we're proposing um, constructing directional ramps um, at Woodcliffe and um, uh, at a northern location, which also um, serves a Todd lot, which is located just north of Woodcliffe Street. Um, these, um, the, the width between the, the new pedestrian ramps is narrowed to um, 18 and um, uh, 20 feet to promote 
shorter crosswalks, which um, reduce exposure of pedestrians within those crosswalks, and <clears throat> promote slower turns from Howard Avenue. Pradu, is, was there a reason why one is 18 and the other one is 20? Yes, we have checked the, the turn radii um, with the, the um, Boston Fire, um, fire Ladder, and for Woodcliffe, um, we needed a little bit of extra room for the left turn out to, to be accomplished by that vehicle. Yes, correct. Um, the rest of the, the, the set is details um, and the, the locations of the speed homes. Stephanie, sorry. Again, uh, I know you're not touching Quincy and uh, Geneva. Uh, do you have the capacity? Okay, slow down. We read it Quincy Street to slow things down. Uh, hopefully, uh, this doesn't, uh, even if it adds more traffic onto Quincy, it'll remain in a slowed state. Geneva, I don't remember exactly what Geneva, is there a way for you to monitor what goes up and down Geneva and Quincy in case if we need to further manage the, the spillover effect? Uh, yes, well, so we can do counts there. Um, we're also gonna be coming back in sometime later this spring with a raised crosswalk on Geneva, which will help manage speeds near the school and the library. Terrific. To that parking lot, or basically straight from the exit to the community the center community school. Center, yeah, yeah, perfect. That's great. Thank you. Right. Other questions or comments? Yeah, I'd actually just add a couple of comments. Um, I know you had mentioned it earlier, but when were you planning uh, again to do the work on interview? Approximately, I know. Um, um, we've just awarded the construction contract. Oh, uh, we okay. opened the bids last week, um, so it'll take some time um, oh, okay. for all of that. But yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for the update. And I know um, we sent them to you last week after the after you printed the plan. So I just wanted to make sure um, you, you know you got our comments about the uh, the gutter miles and then converting yes. Um, yes. the the catch basin that's in the uh, handicap ramp uh, to a sump manhole and then putting a, a drop inlet north of that. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks we'll a lot. We'll send you another round um, okay. with those corrections. Yeah. Yeah. No. Thanks a lot. I just want to make sure that those water and sewer details show up on the final mile arm. I'll make a motion on a petition of the Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs in Howard Ave, Woodcliffe Street, Wayland Street, Magnolia Street, Faston Street, Lawrence Ave, Crescent Street, Intervale Street, Brooklyn Street, Devon Street, Stanwood Street, and Bishop Joe L. Smith Way as read in the record by the chair. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> So moved. Thank you. <clears throat> We're going to our next item on a petition by the trustees of Boston University for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, bicycle facilities, specialty pavements, street lights, street furniture, street trees, planters, bike racks, bollards, storm drain infrastructure, irrigation infrastructure, and driveway curb cuts. The locations are Commonwealth Avenue on its northerly side at address number 665 east of Granby, Granby Street and Granby Street on its easterly side north of Commonwealth Avenue. This was new business on February 13, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, uh, Specific Repairs Plan, 665 Commonwealth Avenue, Public Way, Boston Proper, Seven Sheets, say January 2020. Good morning, I'm Paul Rinaldi from Boston University. I'm here with uh, Chelsea Christensen from Niche Engineering, and also Tim McKay from Richard Burke Associates, uh, Landscape uh, landscape architect. Mm -hmm. I stand here for the mic. Can you hear me? Okay, you're perfect. <clears throat> so the project is at 665 Commonwealth Avenue, the intersection of Greenbeat and Commonwealth Avenue, right in the middle of the university's academic core. It's a surface parking lot today. The project constructs a building about 380,000 square feet for data sciences, which is computational sciences, math, statistics, and a couple of research groups. About 1,000 faculty and researchers in the building. Uh, the lower level of the podium has about 
uh, 700 classroom seats, collaboration space, which is really important for that kind of, uh, for that kind of community. Uh, <clears throat> through our design process, uh, it was important both for the university, for the architects, and for the city to have a very open, inviting plaza and a very open and inviting first floor. That said, somewhat of an iconic building, and we've taken some measures with an with a, uh, independent consultant to, uh, to make sure that public safety is, uh, is also addressed. The petition before you, a uh, number of specific repairs. Uh, Granby Street uh, comes two-way. Uh, today it's only southbound. We propose that it be northbound and southbound. Flanking the roadway uh, is uh, bottom protected uh, cycle lane. On the east side is a cycle track. Uh, also, we've added uh, to the east end of our site a uh, TNC drop wall. Uh, you've seen the uh, anticipates uh, a change to DTP in the future to allow for a partly protected bike lane from Kenmore Square to the bridge. Anything west of the bridge is already a cycle track. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chelsea. Thank you. Thanks. Um, the improvements we're requesting at Long Com Ave include a about 15 foot concrete sidewalk along Com Avenue with improvements including uh, new street tree planters that are consistent with the Com Ave streetscape. There is relocation of two street lights um, due to the adjustments in the curb radius at the intersection of Granby Street and the installation of the TNC drop off lane. There are some um, security bollards located at this corner for additional protection of the security building. And we've been working with the Commission for Persons with Disabilities to make sure that the ramps are, are what is best appropriate for this area. So we have a, a wide ramp crossing since we last time we're here. The, the, the streetscape will also include several areas of bike racks, uh, relocation of a advertising sign, and the relocation of a fire alarm response. The improvements to Granby Street include, uh, again, the same planter streetscape concept to match the neighborhood, and it has a raised cycle track along this side of Granby Street. We've been working to make sure that that stays raised, one of the changes we've seen in the recent documents is to make sure it stays raised through the alleyway um, so that the bikes don't have to go down and back up. Um, again, we're relocating streetlights to the west side of Granby Street, which is um, under review by the street lighting division. So Granby Street will have about a seven and a half foot for, I assume an LMI is being worked on uh, for the maintenance of the uh, landscape areas. I think, we've, I think we're all set with that. Yes, John? Yep. Basically, you're amending the LMI which you have had for the common project to include this. How are we doing it, John? Yes. Are we creating a new one or are we amending the existing one which we uh, have? It's a new one. Can you have the new one cross-reference the old one? Yes. Because you paid for everything last time. <laughs> and you're very appreciative of it. <laughs> Whatever works legally, we're going to work it out, right? <laughs> Chelsea, quick question. The, it's a very iconic building. Will you be requiring any above ground discontinuances for that envelope? No. So it, uh, that whole <coughs> nice looking the, the building, structure? The building's south facade? Yes. In fact, as part of the process, the building's south facade was pushed back even farther off the sidewalk. Where we had started, okay. so the entire building, even even the foundation system, mm -hmm. so above ground and below ground is all in university yeah, property. Just just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit concerned because of the <coughs> unconventional uh, framing structure which you have. Uh, water that collects up way up there because of the height can through winds 
not bought uh, icicles. Okay. So hopefully you all are cognizant of how to manage that yes. framing structure on your private property way up there. So if the wind catches one of those little icicles, it doesn't come down over my head. Right. Thank you. So the only comment I had was to coordinate with Active Transportation, and they're here. So. Thoughts <laughs> 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 on, on the rare headies? Yeah, Stephanie, you have to feel that. Yeah, Go ahead. you yeah. want me to talk now? Sure, perfect. <laughs> Great. Okay, hi. <laughs> um, we've been working with BU on the site plan and the bike network connectivity um, for a while now, like well before PIC. Um, these match what we are expecting in terms of um, integration into the fuller network. So Granby Street um, becoming a key link back to um, Bay State Road, where we recently um, added contraflow bike lanes. This leads to Silver Way and the bridge that goes to the Esplanade, which is a very busy one. In addition, ComAv itself, um, we have been working on some concept plans for what we could do for cyclist safety um, on this stretch of uh, ComAv. We have 1,300-plus uh, bikes a day um, coming through this area, um, and this will work with our future plans there. Thank you. Yeah. And we met earlier this week with BTD on the construction management plan. Great. And just a little bit more coordination we've done. We're, we're close to that, though. We're close on the yep. CMP. Yep. Please. Hi, my name is Patricia Mendes from the Disabilities Commission. Um, uh, my commission is very grateful with uh, BU that they've been very commu communicative. And we've been discussing the ramps, the crossing, the drop-off area. And I just wanted to share with my colleagues a, a little bit about the next door neighbor, the Sergeant Building. So that building houses the Health College and it not, uh, provides services for the community, not just the students. So it's a wonderful resource. I just wanted to um, share with, with you the amount of people with disabilities that will be using that new drop-off. Uh, so uh, as Chelsea was pointing out, it's on, on the right of the parking lot. So the next building is the sergeant <coughs> building. This is showing up. Yep. Yeah. This is referring to the fact that we have a DPH licensed physical therapy clinic in the building. Correct. So a number of the people who come to the building are not affiliated with the university except as patients. Right. So from um, our point of view, these are our constituents. Yep. Um, so they're going to be using this eventually. And uh, we also have to uh, keep an eye on the construction period because they will be coming every week and every month. There's a monthly group that get together there. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Sorry to echo uh, Patricia's comments. Uh, Management of our right of way during construction is becoming an ongoing uh, issue. We don't have enough eyes to be everywhere. And you being a very important corporate client, I'm not sure how to best say that. You, you are much admired by all of us. So if you can instruct your contractors to conduct business in a mannerism that doesn't embarrass things for either you or us, we would truly appreciate it. Okay, And it's not you. It, we are having these challenges throughout our city where contractors are taking some questionable liberties within our public right of ways. Project team has been having regular meetings with the dean. Also, let me address the, uh, as part of the construction management plan book, there is a temporary drop off that we've been very strongly to start. The longest time they've used existing curb lines. So, that area being under construction and with the or trucks to go in onto the sidewalk. We've moved the drop off east to the east end of 635 Con Avenue. We also have in the back alley, private laneway, we've created uh, several handicapped parking spaces and we've made that back door accessible so that we have the opportunity for coming on Avenue drop offs and perhaps a ride. We also have a destination on our private laneway for anyone visiting the clinic with an easy access. Thank you, Mr. 
So, Paul, I'll, I'll be happy to uh, work with BU on the wayfinding strategy for the Sargent building, helpful. if you'd like. Yeah, thank you. That'd be helpful. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, make a comment. I know the last at the last meeting we made a comment about uh, on Quam Ave. Um, you know, the commission felt that the uh, location of the benches were right on top of the water, and um, you have granite blocks of the benches for us to remove them. Uh, would take you know take some time. So actually, what che uh, Chelsea and team did, they came up with some masonry details. Um, you know, as an alternative solution. Um, but there has just been some discussion in the office about, you know, they're still concerned about the location of the benches. So I know that's something that uh, we have to, to work out. Um, and, uh, and I know we're also um, you're still working on some final comments for the site plan, uh, with the site plan submittal. So thank right. you. We'll continue to work with Boss Water and Sewer to close out those items. Oh, great. Thank you. Other comments? Todd Robbie? Members of the public. All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Uh, I'll make a motion on a petition of the trustees of Boston University for the making of specific repairs in Commonwealth Avenue and Granbury Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Our next item is on a set of petitions by the trustees of Boston University for the granting of a private utility license for the installation of a new utility infrastructure within the following public ways in Boston proper. The locations are Silver Way at the rear of 595 Com Ave, generally between Com Ave and Bay State Road, and Ashford Street at address number 100, generally between Elkhorn Street and Auburn Street. This was new business on February 13, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, for Private Utility License, 595 Commonwealth Avenue, Silver Way, 100 Ashford Street, Public Way, Boston Proper, two sheets dated January 2020. Paul Rinaldi, Boston University. Um, just as a general introduction to this, uh, the university's um, underground network system uh, has been developed in partnership with Verizon. Uh, so we have our own duct, our own conduit tends to be in Verizon duct banks. Um, as part of our data science project on Silver Way, uh, the duct bank that goes from one of our hubs uh, into and through a Verizon duct bank is full. So we need to install. Verizon doesn't support this program anymore, uh, hence the, um, uh, the private utility license. Um, on the west end of campus, is it, can we do one at a time? We can, yeah, let's, let's the, just do Silver Way while okay. we have this up here. Awesome. Uh, Chelsea Christensen, Niche Engineering. Um, so this is the site of the data sciences building, mm -hmm. and the infrastructure that we're um, working with comes through existing duct banks, through the, the existing laneway right at the end of the laneway into this building. And so we need to have about a 10, 11 foot extension of a new duct bank from the existing manhole into uh, this building here. This is a request for license in this area. The private utility cover on this, um, you might want a BU1. BU one. Uh, just because that'll get us to you faster. Um, I, we have like, if miscellaneous fine, but I, you guys probably, we know how to contact you. So yep. if you just announce it on the cover, it's. Thanks. Not to wordsmith it, but I'm not actually crossing. Like, just, yes. like, just be you, like, would suffice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> As opposed to yeah. being. We'll, we'll call you. What Ms. Cording is saying is, uh, is quite relevant because this whole notion of a private utility goes back a few years when they have only a few couple of utilities that were in the business and then we had the Department of Public Utilities. So to call Verizon a private entity, which is a private entity and you, they are both the same. So here we need to know your name rather than a private utility. Yep, exactly. Okay, because we are not regulating you, we are not regulating you in the mannerism which we regulate others by the insistence of shadow ducks. There are no, not shadow ducks. That's, yeah. is that a spare well, here? they would be obligated to put in shadow ducts if they were going somewhere other than into their own building, right? So we don't need shadow for that, okay. but they would be, um, but uh, yeah, I think that but it'll get us BU. to you faster. Okay. With the BU name. Yep. Yep. Can you take us down to the Malvern Street one? Unless yes. there's other questions on the Silver Way. No, okay. The other crossing is located at 100 Ashford Street. I apologize, I did not bring that area of it, but we do have it on. So uh, the at 100 Ashford Street is here, and this is the location of the existing softball field. So we're requesting to connect a uh, duct bank across Ashford Street for a new scoreboard. Great. And 
same comment here about rather than private utility crossing. Okay. You're just say Boston University. All right. Other questions or comments? Actually, we did look up our water main information on that crossing, and um, we actually don't have any recent depth information, uh, just as an FYI. And um, for the most part, our water mains are about five feet deep, but they have been uh, shallower in other locations, so it's just an FYI. Okay, don't find it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't find it with a back hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions or comments? Todd or Abby? Sir. Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve a, a set of petitions by the trustees of Boston University for the granting of a private utility license uh, in the area of Silver Way and Ashford Street as, as more accurately described in the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thanks, Thanks very much. Our next item is on a petition by XNS Systems for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within the following public ways in Boston proper. The locations are Berkeley Street at Commonwealth Avenue, Clarendon Street at Commonwealth Avenue, Dartmouth Street at Commonwealth Avenue, Fairfield Street at Commonwealth Avenue, and Hereford Street at Commonwealth Avenue. This was new business on February 13th, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, XNS Systems, Boston, Commonwealth Ave, Clarendon Street, Berkeley Street, Dartmouth Street, Fairford Street, Hereford Street, three sheets, dated January 2020. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. For the record, Ricardo Souza from Prince of Bel Tye, here on behalf of Extinet Systems. Uh, to my left is John Morrison from Pike Telecom, and then Arthur Pino to my far left, who's uh, Senior Manager for Extinet Systems. And uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, this is a continuing effort by Extinet to extend its wireless DAS network through in the city. Um, pursuant to its franchise agreement with the City of Boston. Uh, we've submitted some revised plans that reflect uh, some moves of the handholds that, that the commissioners uh, requested. Those are reflected in the new plans before you. Um, in addition to that, I've just submitted some information uh, relative to the cuts to our micro trenching, um, which are fairly disruptive. You'll see that in 2018, it was about $88,000 there were um, essentially 11 cuts affecting, um, affecting 18 of our nodes. And so there's downtime. And what we're trying to do as part of these nodes is to build a reliable network for our customers, but also for the general public as well. And so what we're finding is the nature of the micro trenching simply isn't the reliable uh, source of fiber that we need for these nodes. And that's one of the reasons that we've requested the traditional trenches versus the micro trenching. Um, and so with those cuts, not only comes downtime to the wireless networks themselves, but also more trucks and more disruption to the streets themselves in order to repair those cuts. And so what Arthur uh, would like to do is respectfully request that the petitions be um, approved as presented. What he can do is take some extra efforts to make sure that um, we can use some seal coating methods in order to make a smooth uh, patch after the cuts. And I think Arthur's reputation speaks for itself relative to the care he takes um, in the work that he does in the Boston streets. Uh, I, I think we can look at conventional here. I would just coordinate with Mark Cardarelli on the sort of the actual uh, repair methods I know that you would. I just want to make sure that we're uh, aligning with what our general standards are there. Yes. Okay. Um, I appreciate you moving the, uh, some of the handholds into the uh, furnishing zone rather than into the roadway. Does Exit have a composite cover or are they all metal? We have composites. Yep. Okay, good. Yep. Right. For the sidewalks. Exactly. Yep. yep. Great. Separate topic, do you, do you have any of your wires above ground? Above ground? Yes. No. So right now your DAS system is completely underground system. Yes. yes. Are you planning on going above ground? For any of the wiring, no. Anywhere in the city? No. Again, truly appreciate the care which you take to ensure that the streets are mm -hmm. as if it is yours and the street that is being cut up is a street which you live on. Yes. We appreciate that. Yes, thank of you. Of course. Other questions or comments? 
Todd Robbie. Awesome. Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion on the side. Uh, make a motion on a petition of a Xnet Systems for a grant of location in Berkeley Street, Clarendon Street, Dartmouth Street, Fairfield Street, and Her Hereford Street, as read in the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Moving on to our next item on a petition by Xnet Systems for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Boston proper. Somerset, Somerset Street south of Cambridge Street and Bowden Street north of Dern Street. This was new business on February 13th, 2013. This is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, Xnet Systems, Boston, Summer Street, Bowden Street, one sheet dated January 2020. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Once again, the previous petition involved five nodes in the back bay. Um, and this particular petition that's before you involves two nodes in the Beacon Hill area. It's outside of the Beacon Hill Architectural Commission District. Um, but once again, we've also made some changes relative to the handholds as requested. And we also respectfully request that these also be traditional digs um, simply because of the information that we presented relative to disruption to the microchanging that we've used in the past. Um, at least the version plans that we have, it looks like both handholds are still in the... You know, the perfect, great. Question. How does that intercept point A? I'm sorry, say that again. So, like, we take everything up and it says that uh, the PVC power view can propose intercept at point A to propose handhold. Is there a structure at point A? How did you draw this, John? No, I think basically what happens is that that intercept point A is where they come together. So, That's from intercept point A to the handhold is joint trench. Yep. Other questions or comments? Uh, same as before, we're comfortable with conventional, just coordinate with Mark on the actual specifics. So. Yes. We will do so, absolutely. All right, Todd or Abby? Yes, Members of the public? Um, actually, I apologize, Chris. Um, oh. I did I just want to make a comment about uh, the Bowden Street. Um, I know we were at the last meeting, we talked about um, we were doing construction. Um, so, Somerset right. Street, we were all set with. Uh, we were actually working in a different area, um, but Bowdoin Street, uh, we will begin work in April, and we just kindly request that you wait until we are done. Uh, we expect to be work, working in June, and we are starting at the work at, at Duran Street. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve a petition by Extinet Systems for a grant of location. Uh, at the uh, area of Somerset Street and Bowden Street, and as further read in the record by the chair. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you, commissioners. We appreciate the consideration. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to new business. Our first item is East Canton Street, East Adams Street, Boston Proper, pedestrian easement specific repairs on a set of petitions by MEPT Harrison slash Albany Block Owner LLC. How you doing? Thank you for having us. Um, Matt Scheller with Leggett McCall Properties representing uh, MEPT Harrison Block owner. I'm here with Chris Hodney with Niche Engineering. Um, so this is the second phase of our Harrison Albany Block project. I have a question. Sorry, after you. No problem. Just a very high-level question. 
Yes. Uh, I believe one of your properties about Harrison Ave, right? Correct. Right. Yeah, 760 so, Harrison Ave. To the best of your knowledge, Harrison Avenue in front of your properties, they look <laughs> somewhat less than what is desired. It's, it's basically a mess, right? How would you consider Harrison Avenue? Uh, right, so. Not just in front of your uh, property, basically Harrison Avenue. Harrison Avenue, so in front of our property, we replace that sidewalk. Uh, the, I'm sorry, my bad. The, the actual roadway. The roadway, yeah. It looks in front of that property. It's it it. Um, that whole road it is really uh, sun, change, right? sunken. Yeah, right. we we upgraded mm -hmm. and replaced uh, quite a bit of the sidewalk. We had Veolia in there, right. uh, and they did some rework of their steam line underneath our sidewalk. That's why it took uh, right. so a lot longer. I guess my we... point is, and I honestly don't know the answer to this. All of these very nice properties are coming up, and we are very appreciative of that. But. Are you expecting the city to rebuild that street sometime in the future? Harrison Ave? Harrison? Um, no, no, from your perspective, you are expecting us to come and clean up that mess after everyone has chopped uh, it up? Um, I, don't, I don't think we've actually really chopped it up. No, 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 no not you. Yes. I mean, I promise you that street was far better than it is today yeah. uh, before all this, the ink blocks <laughs> stuff take to talk, okay? Yeah. And I just want to know whether you think it is we, the city, at a point in time in the future, <coughs> is at, coming at, to rebuild that? Is that, what, a, you, is that at, what you expected? At a point in time, I, I, I think it needs to be done. How and who and that's to be I think determined. There may have been something lost in the translation because as to who is going to pick up the cost of Harrison Avenue. But we will... Can you walk us through this? Yeah. Um, so we'll start on uh, East Denham Street. So we're generally sitting in the top right here, that's what we're just back. Um, we're smack down in the middle between Harrison Avenue yep. and Albany Street. Um, so, so then, so, so we're going to have a single look better. So we've got Building 2 right here, Building 1 leads to the corner of the sticking out right here. Um, we have some previously approved work, which pretty much surrounds the work that we're proposing. Um, so, right out in the second. Phase one work, there's still with phase one work across the street, and then the uh, pedestrian ramp is actually part of the phase one work also. Um, and that was just because there's a parking garage under the entire site. Um, the only two is going to be built on top of that, so that's part of phase one. Um, and this will go to the same for the industry. This can't be the um, So the proposed improvements are new concrete sidewalk, um, same with alignment as the one we're connecting to on both sides, um, along the whole like, project. Thank you. 
Is that the lip to hold the grain or? It's a little hole, right? I can't fix that. Yeah, there's a, so there's a metal frame yeah. and we have some landscaping areas yeah. in there. So it's built on a concrete foundation popped in, it extends up through the pavers, and then it has a landscape. So you want to step there? Is that yeah, I think one of the things which we've seen, and it's not specific to your project, and Trisha, you can correct me wrong, but what we've seen is in some other places, particularly thinking about high pickup drop-off areas, that already you've got to be raised them around a, like around a planter. It limits some of the ability for that curve to be used for more accessible ways of being able to get to faster pickup and drop-off. It may not be as it does look like a detail we've used in place, but we just want to have a quick conversation about whether that makes sense. If there's, if there's a stretch in your block that you can use for pickup drop off as well. So we have, we have areas in front of the building entrance that, that it doesn't entrance. have it, and it's kind of spotted right. in there, and it's set back from the curb as well. Got it. So it may not be a. Right, so there is, there is a, I guess, a space essentially to allow for the pickup drop off. Yeah, we, we have Halverson drawings that uh, that provide more insight on that if, if you'd like to. Can you show where the parking is in relation to the trees? Matt, um, sorry. Since you will be bringing this project for the public hearing two weeks later, we are new business, right? Yes. yes. Make sure these questions are processed because you are the engineer of record for these drawings. Okay, so it needs to be all clear in your mind as to the concerns that Commissioner Corning is bringing up and what the chair is bringing up. Okay? Phase two, so, yeah. 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 Because yeah. My, my concern, sir, is you are one of, my concern is you are one of many in that whole ink block area, mm -hmm. and I believe the last thing, no, yeah, you know, yeah. ink block, that whole area, to the left and the right of Harrison Avenue, okay, mm -hmm. and there's about a billion dollars worth of construction that has gone up, and somehow I think everyone is expecting the city to rebuild these streets, even though those streets were massively inf uh, impacted by all the construction. Okay. So somehow my two hands were not talking to each other. Sir, the okay. tap out. Yeah. What's in the tap out? Yep, Kaibu Sahara sign Hudson. There was a <laughs> there there was a uh, tapper uh, executed in um, 2017, end of November 2017, on this. And we actually had a meeting recently with uh, BTD about um, pushing forward on some mitigation items that were, because phase one is up and it's about ready to be occupied. So we have a whole list of mitigation items that we're proceeding with, including, uh, you know, $310,000 worth of signal improvements and a whole bunch of other things that we can get into. And part of that meeting was to determine um, curb use because out there today, or in the past, it was mostly meters, and we weren't sure whether they should be meters or not. So we've developed a plan with, um, with the project team that will eventually be with uh, BTD for confirmation of that. And included in that are some pickup drop-off zones in front of both the uh, phase one and phase two towers on uh, East Edham Street. So just for the public area, we can sort of show where those are on the plan. Yes. Yep. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Next item is uh, 9 Chelsea Street. Sorry, our next item is 9 Chelsea Street, 144-148 Maverick Street, Bremen Street, East Boston, specific repairs, projection licenses, on a set of petitions by Linear Retail Properties, LLC. Thank you. 
Uh, Dan Burke, Bowler, uh, with me here today, uh, Frank Killalay, OPM for Linear Retail, and Mike Manship, architect with Form in Place. Uh, so, 9 Chelsea Street, the corner of Chelsea Street, Maverick Street, and uh, we also have Project Frontage on Bremen uh, on that side. Uh, it's a, just under a half acre. Um, there are currently four lots on the property. Uh, formerly a funeral home and three smaller buildings. Those were demolished in July 2018. Uh, the proposal is a three-story, about 39,000 square foot retail commercial building. Um, so, and we're here today to discuss two, uh, two actions, specific repairs and projection. Uh, so, I'd like to walk through the specific repairs. Perfect. for me is because uh, for the public hearing, if you can bring us some schematic, or do you have any schematics uh, that shows what your building's going to look like? You have, great, wonderful. Yes. Okay, so if you can just, no, no, sir. No, no, no. <laughs> for the public hearing, it will be good for you to blow that thing up a little bit so we can have the context. So you are improving the sidewalks on either side of that little, uh, Lot, right? Correct. Right. So then it's it might look a little bit weird. Do you think it'll look a little bit weird? What well, they they've improved their the corner of the ADA okay. map on the corner, so there has been work some work done in that corner. <coughs> so that is what we would look for. We would ask for your consideration. Take my words carefully, okay? Because let's assume that they did something in the corner and just immediately to the right side of your sidewalk limits. If there's a little bit of sidewalk that needs some attention, see if that can be yeah, taken apart. Carrying your paving strip only in front of your building and then it's going to stop. stop. You're putting in ornamental here. lighting and they have clearly one other non-ornamental light. So it's going to be very obvious this project was this wide. And I want to be sensitive to the fact that you were below the 50,000 square foot you know, limit. You did go through the full article 80. Yep. Okay. So that's why I'm asking your consideration to not let your wonderful improvement sort of stick out, thinking what happened over there. Yeah. Just give some consideration. Yeah. Uh, so EDA ramps, there's an existing uh, single apex ramp. We're doing the double cross, and there is some uh, reconstruction on the other side of the reciprocal side uh, on those crossing average. Uh, bike rack, as you mentioned, more metal street lights. So we, we met with uh, street lighting. That's all right. Yeah. So they're they're good. They're happy with what we proposed. Uh, right. Different style going up up the road. Um, Two drops up one side and corners on the other. Yes. That, that's yeah. I mean that was, that's deep. We we went back and forth several that's times during the meeting. Yep. Then, but that's what they that's their vision for as they go up both of those streets. Right. A different one on Chelsea and, and Maverick. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so grabbing the one last light on your block on please. Maverick okay, would I'm, make I'm, a big difference to the aesthetic of this. I think that makes a lot of sense. We will, we will discuss it. Because the city invested, you know, millions in this neighborhood because it is close to the waterfront. Mm -hmm. We recognize that if we throw money in there, you will come later. And you are here. <laughs> Just help us to 
create a cohesive neighborhood. So that's all what we have. Can you go straight from your parking lot into this building, or do you have to walk down Bremen? And so right now, we're working with disabilities to iron that out. Right now, the back doors of this are just service and egress only. Uh, there, is a, there is a stair in the back to get up to Maverick, but we are going to be seeking a variance from so AB for. Yeah, so I think that that's what. Sorry. Yeah, no, I think that we're going to say the same. <laughs> I think you may want to look at the condition of that side box for that full limit. Because you are sending people You are around. sending. Yes. Okay? Yep. So it's, now it's yours. Not out of the goodness of my heart. I hear you. Okay. Uh, last thing is physical repairs, uh, utilities in Bremen, in Bremen Street. Um, and then we were, you made a comment about uh, the gutter mouth. Okay. And actually, I just thank you for uh, responding to those and updating the plans. Uh, we did notice that the catch basin detail was out to date, so we're going to send you with a revised uh, detail. Thank you. Um, as far as projection license, you can walk through with my This one we could truly appreciate the little sketches which you have right. rather than me trying to. So yeah, actually, even you are right now, if you could yeah. share that picture. To show us where the. <laughs> yeah. So these are just uh, canopies, um, and only on Chelsea and Maverick Street. Uh, they're Excuse me, sorry. I think can we take a look yeah. at that thing because uh, just we just want to make sure we will give you the proper guidance. show the more it helps us to understand so it seems like you want to activate the ground floor with the cafe which further leads to having a cohesive footprint at your building and you know that last little area you know the misty block the one that is not owned by you those side box needs to be in a passable complementary state to your project we may not be asking you to carry that perfect footprint, but let's hope that it is not an awkward location because you are going to create pedestrian foot traffic from your parking lot through that area. Is this view Chelsea or Maverick? That is Maverick. Is it Maverick? That's Chelsea. That's oh, oh yeah. <laughs> there we go. I was like, no. I'm confused. <laughs> that was my bad. Yeah. No, so that, you have that the cafe on. Clarifies. Uh, it's, the, it's the corner of Chelsea and Maverick, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Maverick, Chelsea. And the parking lot is envisioned as just for, it's not for public use. Oh, no, it is for your, right. your street, yes, but they are going to be walking on our street and oh. call me and say, hey, Peter, fix it. So, so you're asking us to extend the sidewalk repairs so, to, uh, okay. I, I, I would like your consideration you want to, consider to do the right thing. Connect your parking lot to your building. From Maver uh, the, the full length of Maverick from Chelsea to Bremen Street. I mean, you are doing a cool project. I'm trying to say this thing without saying what needs to be said, mm -hmm. where you may understand what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Same with Bremen Street, otherwise. Okay. Um, quick question going, going back as we're preparing for one quick sec related to the sidewalk cafe. Yeah. So, uh, I assume this is intentional. You have interest in potentially a sidewalk cafe at that particular corner. Potentially, potentially. Yes. and that would be by a, say, a, 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 a separate yes. exactly. Yes. Yep. So we understand that they would have to come back, okay. and that would be related. Okay. If that's the case, and they grant you to put others on this, there may be some elements of the way in which the furnishing zone is designed, or other things yes. that that would that you you might want to think about between now and the public hearing about do we want to make design changes with that as a future use in mind? Okay. Dimensionally, you're not going to fit a cafe with this streetscape, so if a cafe is something that you want, you should figure out what dimensions you need to make yeah. that the minimum cafe happen. And we strongly encourage you to have that functionality on that sidewalk. Yep. Have the restaurant, have the cafe, it livens up our neighborhoods, so just, so, so you need to help them yes. to take a couple of steps ahead so as not to uh, limit what your options are from today. And so then, coming back to the projection license, essentially this 
can you just walk us through essentially the what this will provide over the retail shops? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, it's just under three foot from the face of the building. Yep. Uh, it's on Chelsea and then two on Maverick here, uh, between 11 and 12 feet from the sidewalk elevation to the bottom of the projection. Let me make sure I. So I'm going to assume that what you're speaking of are these ones and not this brown color? Correct. The, Correct. The, these those, are recess. Those are within the, yes. Like these are not sticking outside? Correct. Well, they are. It, it looks, not over the no, it does. So you may want to get your money back from the person who did this thing. Okay. I have a bad thing saying. The, no, because these. Th those two bays do project, but they're not over the property line at that location. The building setback a little bit. Building setback. Let me commit you. One of the few that are actually keeping Coming the. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I should the blade signs. Are they? They're not. They're being separate. Actually, they're probably tenant driven. So. Okay. And separate. So Late sites could be considered under the projection license if they know where they're going to be now. They have a they place don't. Where they're they're until you yeah. got it, that'll be a future. You don't know how wide or long or whatever. But. And, and the, the canopy structures are, are really there There's to provide an armature for signage. For signs. Yep. Okay. Other questions or comments? Excellent. Good. Uh, Todd Arden. We're good. good. Members of the public? All right, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Great, thank, thank you. you. Until then, moving on to our next item, 288-304A uh, Street, uh, South Boston, Grand Location, not efficient by TC Systems, Inc. with Sienna Engineering Group representing TC Systems for this petition. Um, TC Systems is petitioning uh, for lead company status on the installation of approximately 159 feet of PVC conduit on A Street. Uh, this project will not have any participants and has been entered into co-books. Um, we are petitioning for two four-inch PVC conduits uh, with one quad duct city shadow uh, from an existing Comcast manhole um, at the intersection of A and Neck of Court. Uh, to a point where it reaches the existing Verizon manhole number 1209A. I'm sorry, sir. Um, so you're coming out of a Comcast Correct. manhole and going into? A existing Verizon manhole. Okay, so now to, uh, to build up your network, you are just going between two separate uh, companies' manholes. Yes. That is in a nutshell? Correct. We have letters from both Comcast and Verizon authorizing TC systems to be in both. I have those on hand as well. So what I'm trying to get my hands around is we are things we didn't anticipate, I didn't anticipate. Okay, we are now we have various companies trying to be connected with another series of trucks. It's curious that neither Comcast nor Verizon wanted to participate in this, Everybody but they were both notified. Um, maybe we reach back out to them one more time to make sure. Or add an extra city shadow duck. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Um, this area is notoriously tight, which is assuming why you're doing this, but I, like, I'm assuming that both of these are at capacity and that's why you're cutting between them again. Uh, yes, well, not only that, but I don't believe there's an existing connection, connection between the okay. two. Right. Then we'll take two. Absolutely. Uh, we did revise these plans per um, Todd's suggestion to show that the quad duct will be um, brought into both manholes and tagged and or, you know, labeled properly. Necro Court, a public way, right. private way. Right. Does this have any impact on Necro Court itself? What's that? Right. Well, that all of this, I feel like we're looking for extra capacity. We know what's coming. And so the notion of what that's going to be in the future is going to change. Do we need the consent of the Necro Court owners? I don't think they're getting into Necro Court. I think this, this will stay just outside the property. Just outside line. the right. Okay. Right. Other questions or comments on this? Todd or Abby? Just, we'll just want revised plan showing the second shot of Yes, sir. Perfect. All right, members of the public? All right. Two weeks enough time? Yes. So, okay, great. Yep. We'll see you on March 12th. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, our last item is Preble Street, Old Colony Avenue, South Boston, a granted location on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber.
Hey, good morning. Uh, Chris Murray with the GMR Group. Uh, look for a grand location on Preble Street and around the corner on Old Colony Ave in South Boston. Uh, no participants uh, went to come forward. Um, we've notified all of the appropriate utilities and public agencies. Uh, however, we are still waiting on a response from the Streetlight uh, Division. So can you help me understand why you, okay, you are starting from one of your handholes? Correct. And then you are going to a mistake? In an electric okay. manhole. Uh, we're going from an existing handhole on uh, Old Colony to an electric handhole Eversource. or manhole. Eversource, correct. Eversource electric or? Electric. Okay, so, so yeah, filter the drama of Eversource electric going from Eversource Electric to NSTAR Communications to, because all this drama of us not being able to go into an electric manhole has now evolved after so many years to this charming situation. Yeah. So we have, uh, the project has submitted a, a breakout letter from Eversource authorizing for them to be in that manhole. They're running to an existing handhole that was recently installed um, in conjunction with a DAS node attachment to the streetlight on Colony Ave. So, so the they're going from ever source to get to a new antenna. This power or fiber? Fiber. Definitely fiber. fiber. Yes, yeah, sorry. So it is fiber. So my question is, the conduits that are there within the ever source duct bank, are those conduits, conduits which PIC transition from power to telecommunications? That I don't know. This is just like too, too many years of history about how Eversource Electric. No, because this is still electric. Yeah, yeah, no, but within their electrical duct banks, Amy, we gave them permission to move some of their excess capacity ducts to telecommunications. That Yet they. Hmm? That was crap. Yeah. I don't know whether they put the wires out, but then they still prohibited any party, any third party, from tapping into that system. So now. Does Crown Castle have existing fiber running to I believe that so, yes, in that ever source manhole. That's, that's the exact reason why we're going there. Do you know where that fiber is coming from? I could find out. Can you help us to sort this thing out in terms of how you're tapping into the ever source system? Or how you got oh, there in the first we, place? We, we have existing fiber in the ever source system. Oh, you have? Yes. My, that didn't connect. Okay. My, my bad. Yeah, we, we have existing fiber in the other source Within system. That's why we're going to break out of it to run a cable from there to the gas antenna. Are there, and they are there. They need to connect. So right now, yes, I think you're saying to the ever source system, you have your your assets within their electric duct bag. Correct. Uh, you're proposing micro trenching. Obviously. You were probably here for the XNet presentation. Do you have similar concerns around micro trenching? Do you feel like micro trenching works in this location? I'm sorry, I didn't so, hear. Do you, are you comfortable with micro trenching as the approach? Yes. 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 Other um, Actually, um, at Water and Sewer, we have a uh, SCOP coming South Boston separation uh, project. So I'm going to just double check and make sure that I, I know you filed this with our office That's and we had it signed off, but since then um, this project has come up and, you know, we'll just double check it again and make sure that uh, it doesn't impact the design. And, I'll, you know, I'll just send that stuff to you. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. So there's between the Eversource track back and tying into and where your, uh, the existing crowd castle handle, there's four other Eversource panels uh, uh, Clearly, you don't have crowd castle fiber going to those yet, but can you just stay in the Eversource system to get closer to the Eversource manhole? That's I don't believe so. I can look into that can to get specific, specifics on it, but um, it's quite possible that we're renting fiber from another provider yeah. in that handhole or that manhole. Yeah. You can just check that because it, it would shorten your dick by 90%. Yeah. So, so we truly appreciate you letting us understand the sensitivity to the issues which you face, but I want to make sure that I understood what you're saying. So basically you could be renting fiber from a third party that has fiber within uh, Insta electrical conduit which we gave them the permission to become a telecommunications. So because of a questionable rental agreement, you feel it is necessary for you to find another route to cut up our streets to some extent 
we, we can look into, into that. I'm sure they already did. I'll look through the documentation to find out, you know, what happened. Okay. Obviously, it will be easier and cheaper to, you know. Yes, but sir, uh, it might, on a long term, it might be more economical for you to have your own assets versus you renting someone else's. So what I'm seeing is an economic decision taken by your team, what we call the private sector, that's impacting the condition of our streets. Thank you. Great, thank you. So, final item, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Yes, sir.